raises some things. Is the where you dwell important? Is the where you dwell important? Okay. Does the where question affect your life? Do you act the same way in an Old Testament class as you do at a basketball game? No. Okay. Does where affect how you act? Do you act the same at a basketball game as you do as when you go shopping at the mall? Maybe so. Uh, but anyway, you know what I'm saying is where you are depends on you know, how you act and stuff. Does the where question shape you? Does the where you grew up affect you? Does the where you grew up affect you? I remember I had a student, his name was Zachary. He's one of a really great kid. Before we were flying to Israel, we were flying out of, this is in the Chicago area, we were down in Indiana, came up to Chicago, we were flying out of O'Hare to go to Israel to study in Israel for three weeks. And Zach said we went up to northern Chicago and we had to pick him up. And so when we were picking Zach up, he was an inner city kid. He said, I got to stop off at a sidewalk uh, before we leave. And um, so he had some flowers and uh, went over to the sidewalk and we found the sidewalk and he put the flowers in the sidewalk. And I don't know whether you know what that means. I didn't know what it meant. It meant that there was a three-year-old girl who was riding a tricycle and gangbangers got out on both sides and this three-year-old girl was shot dead. And they put flowers on the sidewalk as a memorial, okay? So I was like, whoa, this is heavy. You know, we're going to Israel. We dropped the flowers off. And Zach got on the plane and he flew over to Israel. And when he flew to Israel, uh, he took the first tests over there because you had a test on Bible geography. He flunked everything. He's got like 30s and 40s. It's like, holy cow, I bring this student over there and this guy's going to flunk out, you know? He's getting 30s and 40s. And so finally, I pulled him pull aside and I said, Zach, what's going on, man? we got to get this grade thing under control here. Otherwise, you're going to be blowing this whole thing off and stuff. And so then he told me the story of that girl that was shot. He said um, it brought back all sorts of stuff. When Zach was a little kid, north, north side of Chicago, he was in a house. His brother was, his brother was a drug dealer. And basically, these guys broke into the house. And he said he was in the room and he had to watch as his brother got shot to death. So here he is, a little kid, watching his older brother get shot to death. And he said when that little girl went down, he said all of a sudden his older brother came back, and he said he questioned, could you focus on, could you focus on Bible geography? Here's Bethlehem, here's your, okay, no, no, no. Now when you're, all that stuff comes back, and he's just totally, just blew him away, just blew him away. So I'm saying is, did the, did the wear of Zach's life affect, did that affect him? Now, you can deny that and say, I never want to remember that again. But what I want to suggest to you is that's not the way to do it. You can't forget. Can you forget stuff like that? You can't forget stuff like that. You've got to integrate that stuff into your life. You can't dismiss it and just try to forget it. You can't just try to forget it. And so the where question is a really important concept. Now, let's work at the land. Okay, I want to hit various verses here. We'll go through this quickly. The land, now actually get down to the hardcore land of the land of Israel. By the way, this is land is called the what? The promised land. Okay, the land of Israel is called the promised land, obviously because God promised it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, etc. And in chapter 9, verse 5, it says this, After the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourselves, the Lord has brought me to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. God's saying, you Israelites, when you, Moses is telling them, when you go into the land, you don't think it's because you're so hot, you're hot stuff. And God's giving you the land because you're so good. Moses says, no, no, no. No, God is not giving you the land because you're so righteous. Don't you ever think that. No, it is on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out before you. Whereas they're going into the land, why is God going to drive out the nations? Because of their wickedness. Is it on account of your righteousness? No, it's not because of how good you are. It's on account of how bad they are. By the way, when you guys read the book of Joshua, did God drive the, drive the Canaanites out of there? Was it brutal? Was it brutal sometimes? Okay. And God says it was because of their wickedness. That culture is being judged now because of their wickedness. It's not because of your righteousness you're getting the land. It's because of their wickedness I'm driving them out. It's not based on your merit. And it's not based on your effort. If you go over to chapter 6, verse 10 and following. Then the Lord your God brings you into the land. The land what? He swore to your forefathers 
to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you a land, now check this out, a land with large and flourishing cities you did not build. Do you see the turn there? You're going to get large cities, but you did not build those cities. Houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide. Wells, you're going to have wells there, you did not dig. Vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. When you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you don't forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. What's going to be their promise? It's a good land. God is going to give them cities they didn't build, olive groves they didn't plant, wells they didn't dig. God's going to give them as a gift. God's going to give them all this good stuff. And when they eat and are satisfied, God says, you be careful when you eat and satisfied that you don't forget that you came from where? You were slaves in Egypt, and I redeemed you out of Egypt. So question, are the people supposed to remember their slavery, their bondage, and they're supposed to integrate that and understand it and never forget it? And so effort. The promised land, okay? Chapter 6, verse 10, and we just read that. It was the land that he swore to give to their forefathers. It is the promised land. God promised that land to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now God is fulfilling his promise, and they're actually receiving the promise that God made to Abraham and Jacob. This is the great ripoff in life, okay? The promise, the promise was given over and over and over again to the fathers. The promise was given to the fathers. Did the fathers get any of the land? No. No, Abraham bought the tomb for his, his death of his wife. Who gets the possession? Who actually gets to possess the land? The descendants. The descendants. How many of your parents are giving you something that they never had? Have some of you felt that? That your parents gave you, they gave you stuff that they themselves never had. Okay? I went to college. My, my father and mother barely finished high school. Okay? I went to college. And in one sense, well, they didn't pay for my college. I had to pay for it myself. But they, they supported me, gave me food and place to stay while I was going to college, to university. But what I'm saying is a lot of times the parents then what? Do the parents sacrifice on behalf of their children to give them what they never had? And so you get this thing here where the promise comes to the fathers, but the descendants get it. Now, by the way, when the descendants get it, do the descendants appreciate it as much as the parents who give it? No. The parents value it. The children take it, take it for granted. And what? They forget where they came from. They just say, oh, I deserve this, you know? And it goes off like that. 